Good morning, and welcome to this service on this Palm Sunday. Did anyone fall asleep last night singing this little light of mine? <laughs> um, thanks to the Brotherhood for a wonderful program yesterday and to Pastor Lance for bringing all those groups together. So I hope those that participated either in action up here or in, in the audience, it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. So thank you to those. Some words to share with you. The four gospel journey class, the last class will be this even, or Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Monday, Thursday service will also be Thursday at 7 o'clock. Good Friday service will be on Friday at 7 o'clock. So it should be easy to remember. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, here at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, our Easter service will be at 9.15 we want to continue prayers for Macy Farrell, Lucille Elmer, Elton Sherman, Dave Bloom, Melissa Trumpy, and her family. I also would like to wish Carolyn and her students all the best this afternoon for their recital. At the doors, we have our offering plates, and I would um, share a call to offering. Hosanna to the God who loves us, who heals us, who calls us to give ourselves for the sake of the world. When we were afraid, God, you became our fortress. When we were lost, God, you were our way. When we were alone, God, you were there beside us. In you, we live. In you, we move. In you, we are made whole. You have showered us with blessing. We offer our gratitude, Hosanna in the highest. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God. May these gifts be used to bring healing, wholeness, and joy to the world so dearly loves. And I would also like to share with you, the Lord is with you. be seated. Our order of service, our prayers, um, were written by, uh, I'm sorry, Michael Anthony Howard, who serves ministers of faith and action for the Living Water Association 
in the Ohio Northeast of the Heartland Conference of the United Church of Christ and are printed in our Worship Ways, bullet, or Worship Ways website. If you'll join me in the call to worship. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. May the rivers of justice run. Children singing, families dancing. Elders give a shout. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Even the stones cry out. Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. May your refrain never cease. Not by power nor by might, but, but, but the way that makes for peace. If you'll join me in the invocation, let us pray. Hosanna in the highest. I'm sorry. Start again. <laughs> Hosanna to the Holy One. Hosanna. Shouts of praise. Come, we cry. Lord Jesus, come. We gather in your name. Amen. Stand. have our children come forward today. That would be great. We have a few of them here today. Just a few. Just a couple kids. Come on up and have a seat here. We'll all have a seat. And have a little chat. How's that sound? How's that sound? Oh. Yeah. That's Cohen. Come on up here. We'll make room for you. All right. How many of you know what the word hero means? Have you ever heard the word hero? Dilly has. Dilly, what does the word hero mean to you? When you hear it, what do you think about? No? You forgot? Is this on? That's on. Yeah, when I think of the word hero, I think about somebody that's really, really, really super special. Can you think of somebody that's really special? Superman. Superman, yeah. How about you, Cohen? You got a favorite? <laughs> and do you know another hero? Well, who would be another hero? You got one? No. You got one? Yeah. What is it? Mm, Booper Man. This is Booper Man, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. 
You got another one, Dilly? What does it take to be a hero? What do you think it takes to be a hero and get people to follow you? A long time? Yeah, it takes a long time, but you have to do certain things, don't you? What are some certain things that you would do that, that would make people want to want to get get around you? What are things that what are things that you like to see people do that you say, "Oh, I want to go hang out with that person." Can you think of anything? All right. I would be nice to them or be be nice to people? Yeah. Maybe do things for them that they can't do for themselves, too, right? No. You know? No? <laughs> yeah, because people, you know, can't... Superman can do things that nobody else can do, right? Spider-Man. Yeah, you got another one? What is it, Dilly? Um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, those are people that can do things for us that, that nobody else can. Well, today we're going to talk about a superhero. But he's a real superhero. This is... This is a guy named Jesus. You ever heard of him? Yeah. And Jesus has done so many things for so many people that they cannot do for themselves. And so he's got a lot of people following him. And they came in, they, they're, they're coming into this town in a parade a lot like we came in today. And they're laying palms down in front of him and their coats and their blankets and they're shouting Hosanna and saying, this guy's really special. The king has come. So let's all say that together. Ready? The king has come. One time. Ready? One, two, three. The king has come. So we got, we've got lots of things to celebrate today. So today's kind of a celebration. Let's all stand up and say a prayer, and then we'll get started. How's that sound? we got to get Lincoln and Joe in here. All right. Oh, Holy One, we thank you for the many miracles that have been blessed upon us that have brought us to this point in time. Help us to use those miracles to sing your praises. Help us to shout Hosanna from the rooftops. We ask this in Jesus' name. One, three, let's say amen. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. All right, very good. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. Actually, I'm going to start on 29 through 40. When he had come, to, come near Bethage in Bethany, at a place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that's never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after, wait a minute, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road, and as as he now approached the path down from the Mount of Olives, a whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, even the stones would shout out. As I read this text once more, you know, actually we read this text every year. Everybody that's ever been to church in their lifetime Every year, this is a text. It might be in one of the four Gospels, but this story, this, this, this Palm Parade, this Palm Sunday text, is what we hear. I've been hearing it almost every year of my life. Perhaps maybe we should stop and consider some of these things in it 
that need to be pointed out. In this version of palm procession of the king, it takes place on the road from the Mount of Olives going into Jerusalem. So they're not quite in the city gates yet. In the Lukean rendition, it portrays the followers of Jesus as ragtag, diverse bunch of sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors, lepers, those thought to be dregs of society, those from the fringes of the mainstream of Jewish life. And get this, there's even Gentiles in this group. It's amazing. In this version, it's an unbroken cult. I wonder perhaps if, if that's not alluding to the fact that truth and the, way, and the way are not just for those bound up in traditions and rituals. And in others, it seems to be a donkey, definitely headstrong and independent. Not to make a donkey of us, but doesn't that kind of sound familiar? Or a Jenny, a female donkey, a mother, and a colt. The farthest cry from a war horse, a blazing stallion of a conquering hero. And what's up with this strange story about sending guys out to get a colt in the exact place where Jesus said it would be? And the phrase that says, the Lord needs it. That's interesting. How is that actually working? You know, this is kind of crazy, even by our standards today, this, this whole scene that's, that's, that's unraveling here. Like, it's, it's like I said, would say to you to go down to Monroe and get that Pontiac down there with the gray uh, primer stripe on the side of it. The keys will be in it. It's parked down there in front of Bumgarner's. Just get in it and bring it back. I need it. Anybody ask you anything, just tell them that the Lord needs it. And then the more, even more amazing thing, when you got in and started the car, people ran out and said, that's my car. What are you doing? And you say, the Lord needs it. And they're standing there going. It, it, it's a little strange. It's a little strange. But these aren't the only strange things in this story. This story, I'm sure each of us have heard hundreds of times. Is at least as many years as we've walked the earth. That's how many times we've heard it. Jesus has been preaching and teaching and healing and feeding people all over the countryside. And now he's come to the big city. But not just a big city. He's come to the big city. He's come to Jerusalem, the site of the temple, the only place where the people of Israel can have any kind of connection with their God, the one place where sins could be absolved and Prayers and sacrifices for thanks and good fortune were offered. The very center of their being. And then there's his entourage. These people that have been empowered by Jesus' words and actions. They realize no matter what happens to the outside of their bodies, their spirits will be free. And that freedom is open to everyone. Not just those who are Jewish, but everyone. They've experienced the power of love for love's sake. They've seen love conquer illness, demons, and even death. They can see the importance of doing right, not for reward, or maybe that that person will do right to you later on, but doing right because it's the right thing to do. Never expecting thanks. This is a liberation. This liberation that these people are feeling has got them so stoked up. They're into a frenzy. They're not just excited and happy and praising Jesus, kind of like we were all smiling. These people are ecstatic. These people have found it, and they want everybody to know they found it. They want everybody to know who this Jesus is. So they're praising him with wild abandon. They're worshiping him. They're going beyond what anyone would do for any leader of the time. No puppet King Herod would get such a reception, ever. No Governor Pilate would never get a reception like this. And even Caesar, the emperor of the whole region, would not stir up passion like this in the crowd. 
You gotta realize this was making a real scene. Talk about street corner evangelism. These folks were loud in their shout of praise. And out of fear from the fallout into their own lives, the Pharisees are warning, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Perhaps people will hear you. The Roman officials or Herod would be angry. There's always somebody that will be angry whenever you make noise. There's always somebody that won't agree with you. There's always somebody that it's, it's ruffling their feathers just a little bit. This thing you're doing is against the grain, the Pharisees say. You know, they, they probably, you probably don't even have a permit for this parade. There's most likely laws being broken here. The Pharisee asked Jesus to get, get them under control, to quiet them down, and Jesus' response is what struck hard in my mind this year. As I read this verse, I heard this. Perhaps on this stone up here, harder than a knot, I heard him say, that some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, order your disciples to stop, and he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would even shout out. The stones would even shout out. What if the stones could talk? What would they tell? You know, they've been around. They've seen some things. These stones, they've been around for thousands of years. Would they sing of the time when the earth was thrown into the heavens? A great spinning ball that was just set spinning around the star we call the sun? Would they sing of the creativity and ingenuity of a God who orchestrates all life upon this rock we call earth? All of them growing and living in collaboration with one another. Perhaps the stones would lament how, how a being such as humans strayed from the course and attempted to be gods themselves, only to bring ruin and destruction and desolation to themselves and their fellow beings around them. Perhaps they would lament the unrequited love of a God who time and time again allows for us to repent, for us to realign ourselves with him, to restore our relationship with each other and ultimately with God. Maybe they would sing songs of regret for the hard-headedness of humans, who would not see anything but what they wish to see. They could not even see God's hands surrounding them, supporting them, carrying them through their journey. Decades, ages of so-called rulers of the world, self-proclaimed men of power, living fantasy lives at the expense of their charges, ever devising new ways to exploit them and extract every ounce of life from them, to feed kings and leaders lust for power, creating real power of love and care, the marks of great leadership for roughshod rough, rough stomping and careless expending of lives and resources. I have no doubt that the stones would shout their praises to the master architect who, would start, who started the never-ending cycles <clears throat> of nutrients and life to make up this planet. The cycles that create, break down, and recreate all matter on this sphere. Would they speak of all the wondrous creatures that rose from the dust of these stones to make up life on this planet? Would they shout praise for the endless grace that showered every day on all living things? Miracles by the millions happening every second of every day and happening just for us. Perhaps these stones would sing about a God who loved creation so much that he even came to earth and walked as one of us, it was subject to the same pain and suffering that we slog through, teaching us that there's more to our lives right here and now in this place than we could ever conceive. A God who would go to no end to be in relationship with their children. The stones would know these things. 
because the stones have seen these things. All this makes me rethink all the times that I've said, man, you're about as dumb as a rock. Makes me rethink that phrase. If the stones, the stones, if they could speak, they would sing praises. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure they're singing to us at this very moment. You know, they have been here since creation. They have seen the folly of our dominion over the earth. They know, true, they know well where the true power lies. They stand tall and sing the praise. Come thou, almighty king. Last night I lay a sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, Methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. were the glad hosannas the little children sang the sun grew dark with mystery the morn was cold and chill as a shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill as a shadow of a cross arose Upon a lonely hill Jerusalem, Jerusalem Hark how the angels sing Hosanna in the highest to your king. And once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets. The gates were open wide. And all who would might enter. And no one was denied. No need of moon or 
or stars by night, or sun to shine by day, it was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. the King is here among us. As Jesus says, wherever two or more are gathered, there I will be also. Let's take some time to just be with the Christ. Oh, Holy One, you came into our lives so long ago. Every year and every day and every moment you make that appearance again. Help us to shout your praises, Lord, and every chance we get. Not just with our voices, but with our very being. With the way we live, the way we act, and the way we treat people. Help us to sing praises of the Christ. The Christ that's alive and living and walking among us, our King has surely come. We ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and sing praise to Jesus. Sing praise to the Christ.
ever joyful <coughs> singing the praises of our king. Oh. 